Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick Ergos. I'm the Year 10 Assistant Principal, and today I will be taking you through some of the features of Compass and how you can use this tool to keep track of um, your student and what things I have going on at school. So the very first step would be to actually be able to access Compass. So if you're doing it through a computer, a desktop computer or a laptop, you, the easiest way to do it is to go to the Dunham High School website. There's a Compass login link. Click on the link. It will take you to the Compass login page where you enter your username and password and sign in. Your username and a temporary password should have been emailed out to you um, within the first two weeks of school. If you have not received this or you have lost this information, please contact our front office team and they will send it out to you again. Once you've logged in and you go into your student's profile, you'll see the welcome page where your name will be up the top and your student's name um, just underneath. There are several links that we can click through and which provide us with different options for each one. So I'm just gonna work my way through them and show you what information you can access in each section and, and how that can be of use to you. If we click into the profile, this is the most comprehensive part of the, the student's campus profile. It gives you access to pretty much everything that the other links take you to, um, but we're just gonna focus on the specific components here that are really useful when you are trying to find out some information about what your student is, is, has got happening or coming up. So the very first thing that you see is a daily uh, timetable, what lessons I have today, um, their attendance marked in green, if they've attended all the classes on time. If you hit the schedule tab, you actually get a weekly timetable. So you can actually see what the schedule looks like for the whole week, what classes they have on what day. Other information that is available and is highlighted in orange at the top here is any assessment items that are due on that particular day. So we can see this student here had a listening task and a summative test on the Monday. Um, and on the Thursday, there was a draft investigation due. Do please be aware that sometimes these do change um, and teachers will move these, uh, will change the dates for this if they've had to change when an assessment item is due. You can also have a look at a monthly view and see what is uh, you know what tasks are due in a monthly view and what um, subjects I have. We can also see here in green a an event. So any events that the students have will be a separate green box, and that could be an excursion, it could be an in-class event, it could be a general out-of-class event. So this is indicating that this student has band rehearsal at 12.15, so during lunchtime on a Friday. In the learning task tab, we can actually see all the different learning tasks that a student has for all their subjects. Now this view can be a bit confusing because it's just a pretty long list. So if you actually click the button where it says group by code, it actually presents it in a class by class um, view. And you can actually see the assessment items that the students have when they're due and whether or not a student has submitted that. Okay, and we can see that for all the different subjects that this student has here. In here, you will also get the grades for a finished assessment item. So once teachers have received an assessment item and they've graded it, they will put the result in here. Now we will take you back to the main profile because we will have a look at the attendance tab separately. If we go to the next link, it takes you to the email. Form. You can send an email to all of your students' teachers, or you can delete the ones that you do not want to email and just email specific teachers about an issue that you might be having. You can also add any attachments um, in this section as well. In the next link, at attendance note, this is where you can notify the school 
about any upcoming absences that your student might have and the reasons why. So we can see here that if I click, it comes up with two um, options. Notify the sanction is when the absence is due to you know a doctor's appointment or the holidays or anything like that that might be happening. You would click on this, put a comment in as to what the occasion might be, and then you can add the date range for what this might be for. So if it was an appointment and it was only for the first two lessons of the day um, and the student was going to come back, what you would do is come in and go, okay, so I'll be away period one to period two. And then that would only notify them for those two classes. They would then, after recess, be expected to be going to the normal classes and would be marked present for those. Once you have inputted this information, make sure you do hit the save button. Um, otherwise, it will not take effect. You can also add attachments here. So if you've got a doctor's certificate, because you can also use the option of notify the sick, okay? And you can upload a doctor's certificate here. And again, you know, your, your child might be sick for a few days, so you might pick today's date, um, you know, and they've been out until Monday the 14th, so you put that whole date range in. Again, putting a note down. Um, add any doctor certificates that you have for this illness and then hit the save button. Really important to maintain the attendance notes uh, as accurate as possible. It does help the school with the tracking of student attendance and, and making sure that we are able to cater to them when they do miss out on classes. When we go back to our main page again and look at academic reports. Now, the student that we're showcasing is a year 10 student. So they will only have the 2022 semester one progress report available at the moment. The progress reports have green, yellow, and red as the, the traffic lights. You know, green satisfactory, everything is going fine. Yellow, borderline, needs a bit of extra work to make sure that they pass. Red, students having difficulties with this subject they need to actually make some major changes to be able to succeed um, in this subject by the end of the semester. And we can see here that the teachers have put in their codes or the traffic lights green for their subjects. When the students complete semester one, they'll have a report for all their grades for semester one, and that will sit here. And then they'll get a report for semester two and in year 11 and year 12. So all reports that they get throughout the time here at Darwin High School will sit in this section here. Now, we do not have the function to actually be able to order photos through Compass, unfortunately. Um, the company that we use does not have that link. However, you can place your orders of, of photo, school photographs through the envelopes that, will, that each student would have obtained um, last week. The next link takes you to the booking parent teacher student uh, parent student teacher conference. So if you click the link, it will bring up the information of when this uh, this event will take place, and we can see it is on Monday, March twenty first, from three pm until six fifty two pm. If you hit the My Bookings button. It will actually bring up a how-to guide. So you can hit show me how to book and it will actually take you through the steps of which time slots and how to book them. And you can see the teachers over here. And if we wanted to actually make a booking, we can click in here, choose the person and hit OK and that will make that available for us. Now, do be aware that teachers do have certain bookings that they're unavailable for, so you may not be able to get every single time slot that you would like in order, um, and each booking is only for eight minutes. This semester, all bookings will be done by, uh, all interviews will be done by phone, so you will receive a phone call from your student, student's teacher at the time that you've booked in for. These are now open for, for parents to book. 
So please, if you haven't done so, do so as soon as possible. At the bottom here, we have some notifications around learning tasks. So clicking into these will take you to the tasks page again. We can turn off the group by code button and we can see which assessment items are due and when they're due for this student. On the right hand side here, you will get notifications for things that are important. So, you know, the first one is saying reports are available through the profile by clicking this link. This refers to the traffic light reports that we discussed earlier. Parent student teacher conference, clicking here will take you straight to that booking page that I showed you just before. And in here, it actually asks for your for you to notify some absences that your student might have had. If we scroll down, we can see the news link. So in this news link, you get all the important information from a variety of people in the school. So Sally Walker will be one of the key communication people officers. Um, she does the regular COVID updates um, throughout the semester, but also different events that the school runs. She will put up that information. She also does the newsletter, um, and this will be posted up on here as well. You can see Karen Fulton. This is our school counsellor, and she has put up you know, a post about um, the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict and some of the distressing images that are coming out about the war. And you know, teachers will put up information of the things that they have done. Jody Waters and Meg Davis are our careers counsellors and they've all got a lot of information about careers. If, you, if your child has an interest in vet courses or they're looking for apprenticeships, you please look up any posts that Jody and Meg put up because they will contain information around that. The other thing that I wanted to show a bit more closely is if we go back into the schedule, we can see that there's an event here. Now this event is a out, general out of class event that doesn't really require any specific approvals from the parent. But if we click into it, we can actually see the information around it when it is, um, what the cost is for it. If your student was attending an event that had a cost to it, this is where it would show it. If they needed permission from you, you would be able to, um, provide that permission via Compass in this section. And you can see any other upcoming events um, that you should and might have through this page. And that is the main, those are the main functions of Compass as you would be able to access it through a desktop computer. You can also use the smartphone for Compass. However, please be aware that the functionality of the, the the app on a smartphone that it's not the same level as what it is on a desktop computer. You won't be able to do and see all the details of the learning tasks um, and the schedules as easily as what you will do on the desktop, but you will still be able to do the notifications, the giving permission for events, seeing the daily schedule and all those sorts of functions through the, the smartphone. And that wraps up our Compass overview. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comment section. We will try to respond to them as quickly as possible. And we hope to see you guys using this as, as much as possible. Thank you and have a good afternoon.